What's up guys? It's uh, Thursday night. It's 8.30 and uh, it's time for another Thursday night grind. Today is April 2nd, 2020 uh, and we're on uh, episode number 14 here. So 14 weeks straight of grinding with you on Thursday nights. Tonight we're going to get back to this bros blade. I've been wanting to show you how I do uh, what I'm going to call high-end folders, but really carry knives. Um, and I, I, we'll see when I get into this. I think I'm going to try to do a compound bevel, not because I have to, and I'll tell you why I feel that way, uh, but because I kind of want to just to show you. Um, okay, and the other thing is usually this is a show of uh, like what's on the bench with my business, uh, the American Edge. I'm a huge advocate for sharpening businesses. Once you acquire the skills, it's very marketable and, and, and valuable. Uh, but with the COVID thing going on, the coronavirus, I, I voluntarily closed down my business uh, to keep people from coming in. But I wanted to share that with you. Like, I really made the choice to do that. And uh, with with the, like, curbside pickup and everything going on with other businesses, I just want to illustrate that the, the model I've set up is actually pretty, it would be good. It'd be fine to leave it open uh, if you practice good cleaning practices in the shop and then between stuff. But the way it works is I, I have a drop box at the end of my driveway and there's locks on it. You can go to my website to learn more about it. But there's never, never hand to hand exchange, almost never. Sometimes people come in and we talk. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. If you know, uh, there are so many people in this hard, hard position with the unemployment rate skyrocketing. Uh, and I, I want to just like I feel for all those people I generally do. Uh, but I also hope that it's motivation for you to start a side hustle and, and to have something like I'm very fortunate. I had the uh, I had the ability to close down my business. Uh, but if things really went sour, I could start it back up again. And, and believe it or not, people have still been coming and asking for sharpening. So uh, I think the business is still out there. Um, OK, so without further ado, let's get into this blade. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is treat it like I treat any uh, high-end folder. The finish on here, this, this blade hasn't been used. I, I really like knives that get used. Uh, so when I get those across the bench, I won't do what I'm about to do uh, because they're already marked up, right? Like that's, I, I think that's the best like signature you can put on your knife is how, how, how much you mark it up. Uh, but this has not been marked up. So I want to protect the blade. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I also want to tell you that uh, Cody over at Edgepo just put out a great video. If I think of it, when I put this together, I'll put a link to it. But he's gone through, he went through a bunch of different tapes and methods. Uh, I'm going to show you how I, how I do it, which is uh, not one that he did. Um, uh, but he did do one that I think I like better. Uh, so you got to go watch that video for that. I'll, I'll try to remember to include a link. But here's what I do. I'm going to put this in my, so I have my, my vice here. I have my soft my soft jaws. I'm just going to put this in here and, and real lightly grab onto it. I don't, I don't need to squeeze it or, or press it too hard. I do use the, the blue packing tape from the post office. I'm going to go like this. I'm hoping you can see this. So we're going to set it up proud of the edge. And then take my open L bench knife. So now I have that tape that is perfectly contoured to my edge. I'm going to peel this off and just slide it down below the bevel. And then uh, do the same thing, cut the slop off the spine. I'll try to do this now on your side. Hopefully this is making sense to you. Got a piece that's a little longer than the blade. I gotta press down that one I just did. One thing to know is like if you're really being like careful, like you really don't want to leave a scratch, 
What you might want to do is, uh, so after we bring this down a little bit, first off, be careful when you when you drag that knife across the edge. Well, it doesn't matter because we're doing the edge. What does matter Sorry, I'm trying to get it just so uh, trying to get it just so that it is just below the bevel where I'll be cutting, but not. I feel like it's a little bit lower than it needs to be. All right. So then, what you might want to do here is fold the fold the tape under so that you protect the spine as well. If you're worried about marring up the spine, I'm not particularly worried about it with this blade, but you know, it's these attention to detail that it's the attention to detail that if, if you're offering this as a service, it sets you apart from a lot of other other knife sharpeners. Frankly, I don't think there's a, a lot of the sharpeners, like if you search for sharpeners, uh, I don't think that you'll get a, a quality edge like this. So I think this there's a there's a market for this. Anyway, I, I feel like I've proven that. But hopefully now you can I rock it a little bit. Ooh, maybe there. Can you see how the uh, the tape is? It rides the whole, rides the profile of the edge, protects the whole blade. Okay, back to the Edge Pro. <clears throat> okay, so now with most most of these knives, I prefer. It depends. Like if you get the really good used ones in, like. You might need to take a few passes on the one by 30 to cut a bevel back, like that's standard. Um, this one is actually brandy new, uh, but I can tell that it deserves a better edge. Um, okay, so I set up the spaceship. That's what I'm gonna call this thing. Edge, edge Pro's got a name for it. I really like this thing. It also comes with what you can't see with is a magnet under here. I'll show you how I set this up and why, why I like it so much. So I'm gonna bring the, I'm looking at the, um, like the Ricasso end here, set that, and then I'm gonna just slide the center piece up until I clear the other edge of the table over here. Lock that down. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring the, uh, the uh, that magnet is retractable. So now watch this, right? So now it rides there, same spot. So what I, I like about this, like this knife is one of those ones where like it's gonna rock a bit there, like I can, but. The magnet helps me hold on to that flat part. And then this, this knife is gonna not need to be moved for every stone that I work through. I can go to this side, same thing, match that profile. All right, and actually since we're like this, I'll turn that light on, forgive the fluorescent light, but it helps me. All right, the other thing I'm gonna do here to do, a, so I talked about doing a compound bevel. What I want to do first is just see, oh, and I wanted to tell you too, I found a, I found, if you're having trouble getting your 120 stones um, flat, so what happens is they, they dish out, right? You've seen that before. And when you go onto the flattening glass that comes from Edge Pro, these, like, it just takes a long time to, to bring these stones, this stone in particular, back to flat. Um, so I found a better way to do that. If you want to know more about it, motivate me to make a video of it by leaving a comment in the, uh, uh, in the down here in this video. So let's first figure out where our bevel is with this. I watched this dude, uh, Jason Bross. I'm not sure he uses a, uh, like he just kind of, he freehands it. So I'm not sure that the bevel is going to be uh, near the same on either side, but let's check it out. That is pretty shallow. Okay. Uh, what's that? That's 15 degrees. That's that's a little shallow for me. I don't remember what blade material this is, but. Okay, well that'll work fine. All right, so that's around 15 degrees. I'm going to I'm going to cut that with this stone. Actually, this uh, this is going to be a challenge here. 
Well, you, I don't know if you can't see it, but as I bring the stone this way, the stone is touching the handle material before I can get it to the edge. So what I'm, I've got to rock this, rock this up a little bit to try to get over here. Yeah, that's that's not real cool. Marking that up. Good thing it's my knife, but. that off. Check out this side. All right, then I got to see if I'm getting a burr over here now. Nope. Oh yeah, all right. A ways to go. All right, so this side was quite a bit lower than that side. Yeah, okay, so this, I mean, this is why we do this, right? Like, th this edge was not in great condition, and as I'm working through it, I'm seeing how, how much that is the case. Um, this side, from about here up, I'm building a burr, but there's quite a bit of work to be done here and on the other side. So let's just clean that stone off, and this would be a good time to uh, click the, the, the little wheel down here and uh, speed this up to maybe one and a half or two times. Um, but again, what you're getting here is uh, authenticity, like this is real life on the bench, uh, not, no video editing. And by the way, this is why I bought the 1x30. Because, man, I've spent so many hours sawing away at bevels to try to bring them back. It's the worst with kitchen knives. Um, I can handle it with these. Even still, like, if things are a little different, I might take a pass on the 1x30 just to bring this back. But You might also know, actually, I don't know if you can or not, but when I'm trying to cut steel... Uh, I focus on the push stroke. I get I get a better cut on the push stroke. When I'm refining the edge, I focus primarily on the pull stroke. Finer grits by refining the edge. See how we're doing here. All right, so I wanted to show you the compound bevel. So I don't really need to cut this all the way back to the edge. I'm getting real close. This is stuff that you can't see, but I can. Still got a bit of work to do here and the most of that. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more 
So when I bring the when I bring the angle up a little bit, it's gonna um, <clears throat> it will remove to the steel just at the edge, so it'll walk that edge back significantly faster. Um, so I don't need to go all the way to the edge with this pass. The other thing which we can watch for, I don't think I'm removing enough material to make it matter, but I want to keep the edge in the center of the thickness of the steel. Uh, right now I'm focusing on hogging off material on one side more than the other, uh, which could in theory push the edge to one side of your material. For this knife I'm not too worried about that, and the steel is not very thick down at the edge. It's kind of a nice hollow ground. Pretty sure it's hollow. Just want to let you know too, like I love the guys at Edge Pro, but this is a part of the sharpening they're not going to show you on their videos, right? I always, I always love that, how quickly they get their knife done on their video. We're almost there, got a little more. I actually might, I'm, I'm pretty good with that. I might do another pass on this side. Actually, it's good. Sorry about that. Someday I'll learn. Silence my notifications. All right, so you can't see what I'm looking at, but that's good. I mean, I got a nice berth here. I got a little bit of work to do there. Okay, so let's, let's, <clears throat> I'll show you how I do this. So I'm not gonna do, um, I'm gonna set what that stone thickness was, and then I'm gonna refine that edge to the, uh, just one more grit. You don't really need to do this. Like it, that is fine for the uh, first of the compound bevel angles, but. This will make it look better, getting those the, the rough scratch pattern out. Notice how gentle I'm being, bringing that knife on and off of that magnet. Be careful doing that. Okay, so now we just finished the uh, the called the primary. There's probably a more official lingo, but right. So like, the, actually, the language lingo of the edges gets a little confusing. Some people call the primary edge like the where you know where the cut initiates. Some people call it the primary grind, like the way that they've shaped the steel to form an edge, whether it's flat or hollow. Uh, and then it gets more complicated when you start talking about uh, what I call a compound bevel, where right now the, the edge is formed with that angle, but I'm going to change the angle a little bit and put a, a different, uh, call it a micro bevel, which gets confusing too, because some people call the micro bevel, uh, like if you were to do a hone, uh, on a kitchen knife, you know, that little, that, that little change at the very edge that you probably can't even see with your eye, call that the micro bevel. 
so I'm sh I don't know if you've developed your own lingo. I, I just bounce between them all so that I'm impossible to understand. But now what we're going to do is bring, bring this up a few degrees on the post. Let's go crazy and go up three degrees, which is up to the next line on the Edge Pro post. I'm going to, uh, I like to uh, set my, so I'm up there. I'm going to set to the stone and then I'm going to, just so like it's consistent the way I set the, the, height on the post to my stone. All right, so now when I do this, it's going to cut just at the very, very, very edge of that bevel. Like if you can try to imagine like how thick that bevel is, uh, just blow it up in your mind to be this thick. I'm going to cut like the very edge of it. And I'm, I got, I'm starting on the 250 diamond stone here. should put a burr up. Yeah, there's one spot here that's kind of, the, I don't really like the way that blade shape is, like killer burr down here. The, the blade gets a lot thicker back here, and this would be a great spot for a choil, which is where you cut a little dip out there. So that as the, so what happens here, because this blade is thick, as I bring my stone up here, the, this edge of the stone comes up to follow the thickness of the material. And then what happens is you're cutting just on the corners of the stone, so you end up getting a dishing effect, uh, where you know you're you're cutting material uh, with a one inch stone. You're you're cutting here and here, but not so much right there. Uh, and the way I try to manage that is by I put just a little bit of twist pressure, so that I'm I'm cutting with the this corner of this or this edge of the stone more than this edge. Um, Hopefully that makes enough sense for you to duplicate it in your system. Another way to do it would be to use the skinny stones, the half inch thick stones. Another way to do it would be to make a knife that doesn't have that. So as we're doing this, we should talk through like, why would I do a compound bevel? The places that it's been the most meaningful to me have been for very thick steel, like uh, um, like big Bowie knives or uh, other tactical knives. You know, I mean, they got like quarter inch thick spines. It's like, oh my God. So what happens is you cut, a, I would cut a bevel with uh, like on the either uh, on the one by 30 or on the work sharp uh, blade grinding attachment. Uh, and then just refine that to, you know, something on the edge pro and then up it a little bit. So I'm not cutting that whole, you know, the bevel ends up being like uh, big, like, like an eighth of an inch or so. Like it's just, a, you're just, you're just cutting a lot of steel with every stone. So, you know, get the edge, and then lift the post up and just, just cut a uh, um, another bevel at the very edge. And then as you work your way up in stones, those little differences between the angle of your stone based on the thickness of it, it matters way less. All right, I'm gonna do the old trick. I'm gonna jump up to the 1100 here, kind of go uh, every other stone. If I were really, like this is my knife, uh, like if I were really concerned about it, I'd probably spend a little more time here. I actually might re change the way this, this blade is, is designed. I don't, I don't like that right there, but it's what it is for the moment. And if this were a customer knife uh, and I were not on the clock, I would like with the video, I would spend a little more time working on that. I don't like how that's coming out. But for the interest of this, I'm going to, I'm going to press on. Ooh. 
cut that burr off. All right, that's a sharp knife. I'm gonna go up a few more stones. <clears throat> Going to the 4,000 now. The other thing is, I'll show you in one sec here, but you should, if you're gonna do this, you should communicate it with your customer. And I'll show you why in a moment. Stones are ready to be washed. Careful, oh, man, don't go too fast. Actually, uh, I'm going to cut that off. Hold on, man. I like cutting off any, any uh, little bird that comes up. And I'm about to go to the polishing tape, so I'm going to finish each side with a stropping action. And the polishing tape is dry, so you got to uh, clean your gear up nice or dry it all off. <clears throat> Remember with this, uh, so this is a 6,000 grit tape. You can probably see this is not the first knife that's been on it. I probably am just about done with this tape. I might do, uh, it depends. Like if I got a really nice knife and I would just put a new tape on it. If it's something just for myself, I might leave it and get one more out of it. Start each with a pull stroke just in case there's any burr left. And then look, no, no pressure, no pressure, just back and forth. Easy over here, the tip again, don't push down. If you push down, you end up cutting your tape, it's just a pain. All right, go to the other side, start with a pull stroke. Come back here and go. again, no pressure, no pressure, just back and forth. High grit, no pressure, lots of speed. All right, we're gonna put this drop over. Actually, you know what's happened if we, again, no pressure, cut that off. I love how the, the glint of it catches my eye. Okay, so here's why you want to uh, communicate this with your customer if you're doing that. Because if you just look at it, you're not gonna be able to see this on this video, but like you, if you look at it, you'd be like, hey man, like it looks good at the edge, but the bevel's funny. Yeah, it's like, I, I did that on purpose. Um, so there's, like I did have a guy, like before I had a chance to tell him, he's like, you put two angles on there. I was like, yes, I did. All right, I guess uh, that's sharp. I feel like the, uh, I don't always do it, but I feel like there's a gratuitous cut test that everybody likes to see. Like, yeah, it's fine, it cuts. All right, sometimes, like, does it, you know, like, just drop it on as you catch on the on the fingernail? Yeah. Okay, so it's sharp, right? That's, that's plenty sharp. Um, I would... Again, I don't like what's going on in this section. Um, oh, and then just take the tape off. Try to remember to put that link to Cody's video. Wipe it down. Sometimes I'll use some... Um, the Subaki or Camellia oil. I don't feel the need to on this one. And then I use, currently using Hops number nine. This knife is, you know, the action is nice. So I don't feel the need to drop any lube in there, but um, if I did, I would drop some Hops number nine in there. This stuff, it's got that sweet applicator tip. I mean, that's that alone is worth it. <clears throat> Okay, I had a feeling that was going to be a long one. Sorry about that, but uh, uh, hopefully you you picked up some tips and tricks, and uh, you've gained a little bit of confidence getting a high end folder across the bench. Uh, there's definitely uh, there are people out there who use nice knives. So, um, well, one trick like if you're if you're uh, in the like. 
you know, the next chapter in my life is helping people start a sharpening business. Uh, one thing to have in mind, like if that's you, if you have business cards, like you can, like you, you develop the eye, like you can, you, you can even sell when people are carrying knives, um, you know, build up the courage to be like, hey man, I see you're carrying a knife, just want to let you know I have a sharpening business and I do a pretty badass job on carrying knives. Um, and then, you know, if you're lucky, you strike up a conversation. If you're really lucky, you get some business. Uh, but what you really get is the confidence to uh, share with people that this is something that you're doing. All right. Peace out. I hope you all are wicked safe out there. And um, yeah, man, that's it. We'll see you next week. Thanks.